afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. And my name is Ani. And today I'm going to bring you one of my very easy and also delicious cheesecakes. Lemon cheesecakes. Lemon happens to be my favorite. And the lemonier, the better for me. I love it very lemony. But to each his own. So to this, I'm going to say, put in as much or as little as you care to of any of the ingredients, okay? So, we're gonna do two bars of cheesecake. I may have some left over. And we're gonna do one can of sweet and condensed milk with this. I've got one and a half lemons. Usually it takes three lemons. But I'm gonna do one and a half lemons because they're kind of small. And one cup of lemon juice cut from concentrate, okay? Oops, sorry. One egg, three tablespoons of flour, any flour you want. I've got some lemon extract and my vanilla extract, okay? In here... I have my lemon zest. I zested the three lemons or the lemon and a half that I have here. But again, this recipe calls for three large lemons. Um, one thing about this recipe, if you want it refrigerated kind, the no bake, then leave out the flour and the egg, okay? And just use the rest of the ingredients. I would switch over into a pie plate and lay down some vanilla wafers on the bottom and on the sides. And then you pour in your mixture and you refrigerate it overnight. That's the no bake. Before the bake, we're gonna do three tablespoons of flour and one egg. If you want two eggs, that's fine. Uh, the reason why I'm using the flour and the egg it's because I like a more dense cheesecake. I like something I can stick my ticket into when it comes to a cheesecake. Instead of the smooth kind. There's no wrong with it. It's delicious also. I've got my oven preheating 350. I have some graham crackers just laid out haphazardly on the bottom of this Pyrex. So the first thing we're going to do... This is so easy, y'all gonna love it. We're gonna pour in our lemon juice, concentrate our cup. Okay. To put in our two bars of cream cheese. Okay. So we got that in there. We're gonna use the blender. You can use the stand mixer for this. So it'll probably be easier. But I just wanted to demonstrate that you can do it with just a hand blender or as long as your cheese is soft, like you leave it out room temperature, let it get softened. You could do it by hand with just a whisk, okay? Okay. This is nice and smooth, as you can see. So, we're going to go ahead and add in our one egg. Okay. And our three tablespoons of flour. sweet condensed milk 
And this is what's going to make it. Oh, so delicious. Yep, there sure is. Put that in there. Now I'm going to bake this in Baño de Maria. All right. of our lemon juice. Okay, this is done, done, done. I'm going to put in our drop of lemon extract. A teaspoon. Our vanilla. Extract. Okay. to put the batter into the Pyrex. First, we have to taste. Just a little bit. Mm. That is, Lord, absolutely delicious. I'm going to pour this in here. Now you could crush those crackers and do a crumb, but it all eats the same. Okay, I have a little bit left over. And I'll do a little small one. Okay, now... We are going to put that in this bigger pan, okay? We're going to put this in the oven and then put water in it. Don't put water in it first. I'm going to pull this out for a minute. And then put the water in there. There we go. You want to fill it up till it's halfway up the Pyrex dish. Supposedly this helps it not crack. So we'll see. Another thing about cheesecake, when it's done, you don't take it out of the oven. You just turn the oven off and you leave it in there. Let it cool off. And once it's cooled off, then you remove it. Otherwise, you're on the risk of cracking it. That happened to me on my uh, chocolate chip flum that I had made. I took it out before it cooled down and sure enough, it developed a crack. The sudden change in temperature. Eggs will do that. Okay, so we have it in here. I'm going to bake this for 45 minutes. I'll check it 
and uh, if it's done, I'll bring you back. If not, I'll let you know when I bring you back how much longer I had to cook it for. Okay, folks. So here's the cream cheese. All right. Now, I've cut off a lot of the crackers. Here's why. I decided to make um, red velvet cream cheese cake, and I'm using this cream cheese cake uh, for the center. Okay, so which means that the red velvet cake will be uh, baked in the same Pyrex as I made this. So they'll have the same shape, of course. That's what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to leave that uh, layer of graham cracker because I think it would be interesting to have that in the center of the red velvet uh, cream cheese cake. So... That's what I'm going to do. So here's the cake. It turned out really well. You can see the density in that. That's what I like in a cream cheese cake. So now we're going to move on to making the red velvet cake. I'm going to put this in the freeze. You have to freeze your uh, cheesecake as soon as you make it so that it'll be ready by the time your red velvet cake is ready. So I have my Pyrex dish that I've made my cream cheesecake in. I have that ready. And we're going to go ahead and spray some butter on it. This spray, butter spray. Uh, or you can use regular butter and flour it. Whatever method you want to use. I find this to be just quick, quicker. Okay, make sure you get all the corners. And any extra, let it sit for a minute. And any extra, go ahead and pour it out. Don't dab it with a paper towel. Just pour it out. Okay? So that it looks like that. Alright, so that's ready. Now we're going to get into the cake making. Yay! Some people use heavy whipping cream in this. I'm going to use it in cream cheese frosting. I'll use a little bit, but not in the cake. Um, here we have two cups of sifted flour. Okay, I mix my flour because uh, of the temperature and the climate here where I'm at in Kentucky. I have uh, I mix bread flour with all-purpose flour, but you can use just regular all-purpose flour, okay? So we have that. We have two eggs, okay, which I'm going to put in this bowl. We're going to whisk it together with the sugar. We have one, let me see if I can show you, one and one quarter cup of buttermilk. We have one and three quarter cups of sugar. We have some vanilla extract. We have one ounce of red food dye. Okay, this is red red. We have half a cup of oil. You can use coconut oil. You use any oil you want, just don't use olive oil. Okay, you don't want that taste. I'm using vegetable. We have one quarter cup of cocoa, unsweetened cocoa powder. We have one tablespoon of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda, okay? We have one stick or half a cup of butter, and that should be that. If there's anything else that I'm missing, I will let you know as we go along, okay? But I think I got everything in here. All right, and of course the salt. You need a pinch of salt always. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to whisk our eggs with our sugar. Okay. We're going to put our red dye. Let's combine our stuff together so we'll know what we're working with. Our red dye, 
the entire ounce. We want it really dark velvet. Red dye was the gel. We're going to put that in our buttermilk. Okay. Okay, we're going to mix that up. And look how red that is. Red. Oh, Lord, forget my dog. Popster must be home. Okay, so we've got our buttermilk, red dye, and vanilla extract all mixed up. We're going to go ahead and put our baking soda in with our flour. put our oil in with the sugar and the egg. We're going to whisk that up here in a minute. And we're done with all this. And then we'll put our butter in shortly. Let's get our salt. Teaspoon of salt. Or a pinch. So we have that in there. We're going to go ahead and mix it around. Okay. So we have that mixed up. Now we're going to go ahead and whisk our eggs with sugar. Okay. So once you get it nice and creamy, Okay, look at that. I'm going to hold on to that, the beaters. I'm going to go ahead and mix in our buttermilk. Here's our butter. going to go ahead and blend okay so we're gonna scrape the sides Make sure everything is getting blended in there. Okay. Okay, let's see how to taste this. This is good. I already have my oven preheated to 350. Let's go ahead and pour this batter. Just let you all can see. this in the oven to bake okay. 350 see for 45 minutes all right I'll be back okay guys so while we're waiting 
We're going to go ahead and do our frosting. And all that is, is to cream some butter with one bar of cream cheese, some powdered sugar, vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt. That's all you need to do this. Delicious buttercream frosting. So, trick is to open up the cream cheese packet. Here we go. And this has been sitting out for room temperature, so it's really soft. Let me my hands out real quick, folks. Now in goes the room temperature butter. There we go. Another extract. Okay, about a teaspoon. Do a pinch of salt. Just like that. Now the trick is to get off my wet hands. <laughs> okay. And some powdered sugar. should be good that's all that is needed okay so I have to wipe this down I think that should do it there's our cake What's up? Look at that. Oh, look at that. Beautiful frosting. Huh? Huh? Nice. Alright, we're going to shower cap this, put this in the refrigerator. Let's get our cake. Okay, folks, we have success. The cake is done. And we're going to let it cool off. So it took, in my oven, it took 55 minutes in this Pyrex stitch. Now again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide this cake down the middle, put the cream cheese cake in between, and then frost it up. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait till that cools down. Once it's all the way cooled down, we'll go ahead and proceed. Okay, you all. It cooled down enough to where I was able to flip it out of the Pyrex. We don't need that anymore. But it's still, you know, a bit warm to the touch. So I'm going to let it cool off completely. Okay, you all. Here we go. Let me put you over this way. Cake has cooled down. But here we go. All right. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get to the center with a serrated knife. We're going to go ahead and start going back and forth real gentle, real gentle, okay? Okay. Once you got that, you just go back and forth. Okay. 
real gentle. It'll kind of take its own, it'll get his its own momentum going. Just go with the flow. All right. And that is the end of it. So, we're going to remove that. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Flip it over, just like that. Center it. Okay. Another reason for the glove, the moisture in the hand doesn't really help sometimes. So now we have our cheesecake. Oh yeah, so we're going to go ahead and put the cheesecake on top of our first layer. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Doesn't that look like an ice cream sandwich? I started making out a lemon <laughs> cheesecake and then decided I wanted a red velvet cake, a red velvet cream cheesecake. So I went ahead and combined the two. Okay, but this is creativity. We're going to go ahead and frost this. Got the crumb coating done. Okay, at this point, I am going to stop right here and I'm going to go ahead and refrigerate this. Okay, everyone, so here's my uh, red velvet cheesecake. I went ahead and just frosted it and uh, sprinkled some shaved almonds before i serve it and bring it out i'll go ahead and put a topping of fruit 
Uh, not sure what kind yet, if it's going to be blueberries with strawberries, a medley of raspberries, blueberries, or cherries. I'm not sure yet. But here it is, folks. There's my velvet cream cheesecake. And I'll go ahead and take a snapshot of that. So listen, until the next time, you all make this, make it your own. And if you're really good at decorating and piping and all that, go for it. And, you know, uh, if you can, go ahead and upload a picture uh, of what you've created. You can do so on my Facebook page, Creative Cooking in Ani's Kitchen. And uh, that'd be great. Just share. Let's all share what, you know, what we make in the kitchen. And uh, until the next one, God bless you all. And take care of yourselves and one another. Bye.